Now we'll be starting with the next chapter that is squares and square roots. Now, what are squares? Whenever any number is multiplied by itself, the resultant what we get is a square number. So if I say I am taking 2 and multiplying it by 2 again, then I am getting the answer 4. Then 4 is a square number. Okay, this is a square number and it is a square number of 2. So it, that's why it is written as 2 raised to 2. 2 square is equal to 4. So we can easily say that if I say a into a is equal to a square, then a square is a square number of a. So whenever we want to find out whether a particular number is a perfect square or not, we are going to do the prime factorization of that particular number. Now, in the prime factorization, if we are able to get the factors, prime factors as such that they are in pairs, then if all the numbers which are there are in pairs, it is a square number. But if any of the number is not in pair, then it, the number which is there is not a square number. So let's understand what exactly I, what I meant to say by this thing. So we will start with the exercise, that exercise number 3.1. So exercise 3.1. The exercise says, which of the following natural number are perfect square? Give reason in support. So the first thing they are given is the so first cup first is 729. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the prime factorization. I do the prime factorization of 729. Now you know the 729 you can divide it by 3 so it will be 3 2 is a 6 12 so 4 is a 12 and then 3 so 243 will be the answer when 729 gets divided by 3. I can divide further by 3. So 3 8 is 24 and then 181. Again I can divide by 3 to give me 27. Again I can divide by 3 to give me 9. Then again by 3 to give me 3. And then again by 3 to give me 1. So the prime variation of 729 can be given as 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. That is 6 times. Now I just have to see whether they are in pairs or not. So this is a pair. This is a pair. And this is also a pair. You can here do it here also. You need not write the whole thing. So this is a pair. This is a pair. And this is a pair. Now because all the numbers, all the factors over here are in the form of pairs. So that's why 729 is a perfect square. So since factors are in pairs, therefore 729 is a perfect square. Then comes what will be the square root of the same. So we need to write out that support answer or Okay, you don't need to find out the square root, but if you had to find out square root, we need to do it this way. So root of 729 will be, now you are just going to take out 1 from this, so 3, 1 from this, so again 3, and 1 from this, so again 3. So you took 1 from here, you took 1 from here, and you took 1 from here. So accordingly, the answer is 3, 3 is a 9, 9 is 27. So we have over here that root of 729 is equal to 27. Or we can also write that 27 square is equal to 729. No doubt, this much part, this part is not required in this particular exercise or especially in this particular sum because the question only stated that which of the following are perfect squares. So you just needed to find out whether it is a perfect square or not. So here the answer would end. Did you understand this one? So this is how we are going to find out whether a number is a perfect square or not just by doing prime factorization and finding out whether the prime factors what we are getting over here are in pairs or not.
We take the next sum that is 1, 0, 2, 4. So sum number 3 will be 1, 0, 2, 4. Now over here, now since we are starting with the chapters now which are very important. So what I am going to do is only do the alternate sums in my videos. And the alternate sums will be your homework. That means the first class second that is 4, 5, 4, 8, 8 and 4 that is 243 will be your homework. In case you have got any doubts in these sums, you can ask me uh, by phone or WhatsApp. So, you need to find out whether 1024 is a perfect square or not. So, again the same thing, 1024, we divide it by 2, it becomes 5, 1, 2, divide by 2, it becomes 2, 5, 6, divide by 2, 1, 2, 8, divide by 2, 6, 4, divide by 2, 32, divide by 2, 16, 2, 8, 2, 4, 2, 2 and finally 2, 1. We will just check up whether this is a uh, in pairs or not. So first pair, second pair, third pair, fourth pair and fifth pair. Yes, they are in pairs. Hence, this is a perfect square. So therefore, is a perfect square. What would have been the answer? It would be the answer would have been one root of 1024 is root is equal to now it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 2. So it is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. That will be 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8, 8 to the 16, 16 to the 32. So that means root of 1024 is 32 or 32 square is equal to 1024. Are we clear with this? So that was my first part of the exercise. Now we come to the next thing and that is show that each of the following number is a perfect square. So when they say that is a show that is a perfect square, that means it is a perfect square. We just need to prove that it is a perfect square. Also find the number whose square it is of the given number. So basically we need to find out the square root in the same manner. So let's see the next sum. first sum is 1, 2, 9, 6. So second to first is 1, 2, 9, 6. We are going to do the prime factorization. 1, 2, 9, 6. 2 is a 6, 4, 8. 2 is a 3, 2, 4. 2 is a 1, 6, 2, 2, 8, 1. Now it is not divided by 2. So it will be 3, 3, 27. 3, 9, 3, 3, 3, 1. It's in pairs. So therefore, this is a perfect square. So it will be 2 into 2 into 3. Sorry. 2 into 2 into 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. Therefore, square root of 1, 2, 9, 6 will be equal to in the number 2. From here, only 1. From here, only 1. And from here, only 1. So that will be 2 to the 4, 4 3 are 12, 12 3 is 36. So therefore, root of 1, 2, 9, 6 is equal to 36. That will be my answer for this question. Are we clear? Okay. We move to the third question. But before that, please note, there is a printing error in the textbook for the second sum. They have written over here 171784. The it is an error. This is not 8. It should be 1764. The sum number second ka second. The second ka second is 1764. Now if move to the question number 3. Question number second ka third that is 3025. Okay. 
सो प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन थ्री जीरो टू फाइव इट कैन नॉट बी डिवाइडेड बाय टेन बिकॉज़ इट इज़ नॉट थ्री इट बिकॉज़ इट इज़ डिवाइड नॉट सी यू नीड टू नो हाउ टू फाइंड आउट द डिविजिबिलिटी टेस्ट सो इफ द सम ऑफ़ द डिजिट्स इज़ डिविजिबल बाय थ्री देन इट इज़ डिविजिबल बाय थ्री सो इट इज Five plus two, seven, seven plus three, ten. Ten is not divisible by three, so it will not be divisible by three. So you need to take five. So six zero five. Then again five. It will be three. Sorry. One twenty one. Then it will be eleven. So eleven eleven one. So that gives me that is equal to five into five into eleven into eleven. Hence, the square root of three zero two five will be five into eleven, which is nothing but fifty five. Is it clear? So that was the second ka third sum. Now we take the question number three. Find the smallest number by which one zero eight one zero zero eight should be multiplied to make it a perfect square. So. Okay, what they are given is question three is number is one zero zero eight. Now this number they are telling that it is not a perfect square, but you can multiply it with something, and when you multiply it with something, it becomes a perfect square. So we have to identify that particular multiplication number which will make this a perfect square. So let's see what to do over here. Now. So one zero zero eight. When you prime factorize it, it becomes five hundred and four. Again by two, it will be two fifty one. Okay, then it will be divisible by three. So it will be uh, eight. It's not divisible by three. So eight. So let's take seven. Not possible. Sorry, it is two fifty two. Sorry. Okay. So here again two. So it is one, then two and six. Then again two. It will be then sixty three, and then it will be three. So twenty one. Then again three. It will be seven and seven and one. So we see over here that this is a pair. This is a pair. This is a pair. But this is alone. Because this is alone, therefore it is not becoming a square number. So if I multiply this by seven, so if I multiply this by seven, it will reach a particular point wherein this again it will become seven into seven, because what will happen? This one, it will be two into two into two into two into three into three into seven into this seven is what we are going to add to make it into pairs. So to make the pair available over there, the number which could be multiplied is that number which is not available in pair. So therefore, we write over here the number to be multiplied will be seven. Is it clear? So what is the smallest natural number? To by which the one zero zero should be multiplied to make it a perfect square, the smallest natural number will be seven. Clear? Let's see the fourth sum also because it is slightly different. Otherwise, it would should have been a homework, but I'll keep it because it's slightly different. Find the smallest natural number by which one five eight zero eight should be divided to make it a perfect square. Also, find the number whose square is the resulting number. So. We take this question number four. So question number four we see over here as the number is five eight zero eight. So again we do the same thing. We do the fine factorization. One five eight zero eight divided by two. It will be two nine zero four. Again two one four five two. Again two seven. Two six again two. It will be three forty three. Now it will not be divisible by three, but it will be divisible by seven. So seven 
four is at twenty eight, and then sixty three. So nine seven 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 one. So now this two pairs, this two pairs, this two pairs. This is alone. Now the question is, with what number should it be divided so that the resultant number is a perfect square? So if I divide it by seven, so what is going to happen? It is this way that this is nothing but two into two into two into two into seven into seven into seven. So the moment I divide it by this number over here seven, so this and this will get cancelled, and the resultant number will be a square number. Got it? So whichever number is going to be left out as unpaired number that number becomes the one to be divided see the same thing was also for multiplication also it was the same number the answer is almost the same but here only thing is that we are dividing it so the number to be divided is 7 so the number to be divided is 7 The next thing is to find a number whose square is the resulting number. So I have to find a number whose square is the resulting. So what is the so what is the number over here? So the num the resulting number is equals to two into two into seven is equals to twenty eight. Okay. So when I divide the number five eight zero eight by seven. Whatever number I get will be the square of twenty eight, because that's what they ask us. Number find the number whose square is the resulting number. So whose square is the resulting number? Twenty eight ka square is the resulting number. What I get when I divide five eight zero eight by seven. So that was about the first exercise of squares and squares. <clears throat> Now we go to the next exercise, and before going to the next exercise. we need to understand certain concepts so that it's easier for us to go through the next exercise okay